Hello, everybody. I'm Sean Randolph. I'm the senior director at the Bay Area Council Economic Institute, and we are an economic think tank based in San Francisco that focuses on the economy of the San Francisco Bay Area, Silicon Valley region. And a lot of our work has to do with how Silicon Valley and the Bay Area connect globally to their most important business partners. And that's through trade and investment, but especially nowadays, it's through innovation, through technology, through venture investment, and through startup activity. And we've done this for many years now, looking at some very interesting places at, at Europe and India and China, Singapore, Japan, Canada, and other places. And we've just released a new report this month on Mexico. And what is going on with technology and innovation and startup activity in Mexico and what that means, what opportunities that presents for Silicon Valley, but also for other technology centers around the world. So I'm gonna present a few slides uh, just to walk you through this report, uh, which is also available online in much greater detail on our website, bayareaeconomy.org. Uh, we'll go to the next one. So there are a number of very important partners uh, in public sector, private sector that supported this project, uh, both in the US and in Mexico, we couldn't have done it without them. Next. Uh, so let's start off by talking about the Mexican economy at the national level. First of all, it's really big. Uh, it's the second largest in Latin America, the 15th largest in the world. And for a long time, it was based on agriculture and then on manufacturing. And of course, manufacturing was still enormous, but it's been shifting more and more towards services. And nowadays we're seeing the highest economic growth in sectors like telecommunications and IT uh, and financial services. So in the mid 2000s, a whole series of reforms by the former government really opened up the economy. There was a very important one in telecommunications that led to much lower costs, improved access for services, and delayed the groundwork for what's now a very fast growing digital economy. Um, other important reforms denationalized the energy sector, which opened the door for a tremendous growth in uh, uh, the production of renewable energy. And they also created something called INADEM, which was the National Entrepreneur Institute that co-invested government funds with private funds to jumpstart the nation's venture capital industry and did so quite successfully. Uh, unfortunately, under the current government in Mexico City, the priorities are different. Uh, they've shifted much more toward uh, social services, toward support for state-owned enterprises and, and away from a focus on business and away from a focus on entrepreneurship. So fortunately, there is still a lot of interest in that in Mexico and, and the action has shifted to Mexico states and cities. And there are a number of very important states and cities across the country that are very, very focused on business development, on foreign investment, and especially on developing innovation ecosystems that will help startup companies there grow. Uh, next. So if you look at the venture capital sector, it, it's a young sector uh, by any standard. Uh, it's grown tremendously since 2010 and especially since 2016 when INADEM was created. Um, there was uh, you know, pretty minuscule investment uh, 10 years ago. Uh, more than a billion dollars was invested in 2019. Uh, most of those transactions are at the seed and early stage level, um, but the dollar volume of later stage investment is growing very, very rapidly. And most of that activity and most of the venture funds are concentrated in Mexico City, uh, but also in the cities of, of Monterey and Guadalajara, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And most of those deals are primarily focused around consumer and, and financial services. There was really a pivotal turning point a couple of years ago when SoftBank came in with its $5 billion innovation fund to focus on Latin America. And that was the first time a large global investor had come in with very serious capital. Uh, and they've had some very notable successes. Uh, there's, uh, there are now unicorns in, in Mexico. There's a number of really significant companies that are growing fast again in the financial services and consumer space. 
And also a lot of startups now in Mexico are looking to expand Mexico beyond Mexico's market, which is pretty big, uh, to include uh, Latin America. So there's sort of a Latin America context as a lot of these young companies are looking to, uh, looking to grow. Next. So this kind of shows the growth and you can see how we've had this enormous growth from uh, especially 2019 and 2020. So again, the, most of the deals are seed in early stage, but some of these big blocks of capital coming in uh, for later stage investment, you can really see uh, uh, investment taking off both in deal flow and, and, and dollar flow. Next. And as I mentioned, this is really concentrated in, in, in four or five places. You know, the, the big enchilada, the big action for almost everything is Mexico City, which really has an overwhelming presence, uh, both for deals and, and for dollar investment, followed by Jalisco, which is the state where Guadalajara, the tech capital is located, and Nueva Leon, which is really the major business center industrial state closer to the, the US border. Uh, the state of Mexico, which surrounds Mexico City, uh, you put that together with Mexico City, that is an even bigger concentration. Then you have some interesting things going on, which I'll mention in a moment, in the adjoining state of Querétaro, close to Mexico City, and also in, in Yucatan. But again, things are really concentrated in four or five major states and cities. Next. Uh, so I'll look at each one of those for just a moment. Um, Places that are especially interesting for one reason or another, uh, I think to us here in Silicon Valley. So one is Tijuana and uh, the state of Baja California. Uh, what's really interesting and, and distinctive about that is that's really the heart of what's being called the Cali Baja region, which is the integrated economy between Northern Baja California and Southern California. Uh, the port of entry in San Isidro uh, with San Diego is the largest land border crossing in the Western Hemisphere. And just down the road is an enormous, more uh, a commercial and truck crossing at Ote Mesa. About 1.7 million trucks cross the border northward every year at Ote Mesa. And this is based on huge binational production, things like aerospace, medical devices, biotechnology, electronic equipment, um, automobiles. One of the interesting things about that is about 40% of the value that comes out of those things produced uh, in Mexico and Tijuana that's moved across the border north are imported from the United States. So there's this huge cross-border flow back and forth. Uh, one particular strength in Tijuana that not many people would think of, uh, but it's there, is engineering. Um, there are some really key universities there where more than a quarter of all the students graduating every year are graduating as engineers. And there are also a number of noteworthy research institutes in Baja California, especially in uh, the port city of Ensenada, which is just south of, of Tijuana. And so you, you have this growing capacity to do advanced research on top of the uh, uh, industrial and other engineering. So on innovation, there's some challenges, uh, some pretty big ones. Uh, there's not a lot of venture capital around uh, they haven't had any big high profile exits that would really attract the attention of venture investment investors. And there aren't many large locally based, locally headquartered companies that are there to kind of, that would support and nurture young companies. On the other hand, there are entrepreneurs that are coming out of the big tech manufacturing companies there and are starting their own firms. Uh, there is a huge pool of engineers available, sophisticated manufacturing sector that is trying to grow its R&D base. There's some companies like Honeywell and Thermo Fisher that are doing that. And then you have proximity to California. If we think about kind of just the physical synergy of doing business, that proximity to Southern California is significant. And basically you're an hour and a half from Silicon Valley. If you fly to San Diego, it's an hour and 20 minutes. You can be across the border in half an hour. So it's basically two hours door to door. And so if you're doing business back and forth, that's pretty attractive compared to flying to China or India. Uh, next. So moving along the border, there's Ciudad Juarez. Uh, people don't think of that as a technology center, but it is. It's a huge center for binational production like Tijuana. Uh, more than uh, 300 uh, industrial companies, more than 300,000 employees, 
lot of technology related uh, production there. And like Baja California, this is another surprise. There are some really significant universities. Uh, and what's different from Tijuana now in, in Juarez is they are <laughs> developing a number of technology R&D centers, often connected to what they want to do uh, in their production there around you know, AI and, 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 and applied technology. So they're investing now in Juarez uh, in advanced technology research. Uh, I think this is happening in part because the state and local governments are really focused on this. They're focused on entrepreneurial development and they're looking to work with the universities. And then there's a number of incubators that have come up like Technology Hub that are supporting this, this process. So th things are happening in, in what is. Uh, there's some challenges, again, not unlike Tijuana, the startup community is pretty small. They have a hard time getting access to venture capital because there's not much locally. There's a couple of small funds, but it's not a lot. Uh, they still have there a pretty constrained supply of STEM graduates. And there's just not a lot of visibility for startups there. Again, kind of like Tijuana. Uh, but on the, on the positive side, the leadership of the city is, is very focused on this, on developing an innovation system. There are these, these assets, this huge manufacturing base, which is a platform for investment for innovative technologies, especially as they grow their, their R&D. Next. So moving along, uh, further along the border to Monterey in the state of Nuevo Leon, which adjoins Texas. This is a really interesting place because it's the major business center, uh, let's say business oriented city in, in Mexico. They've got a much higher GDP than the national average. They attract a lot of foreign direct investment. Their productivity is the highest in Mexico. Their GDP per capita is the highest in Mexico. It's the second highest in Latin America. And really importantly, it's home to uh, a large number of Mexico's leading companies especially its leading industrial companies. Uh, so it's a very business oriented city that's also looking to move production to higher levels of value added activity through technology and working to develop its own innovation ecosystem. So they have a major research and innovation park. Uh, they actually have an innovation strategy, Nuevo Leon 4.0. It has very, very strong universities. There's almost 200,000 students that enroll, enroll there in graduate and undergraduate programs, of which more than 80,000 are in science, technology, and engineering. 26,000 are at the graduate level, and of those, half are in science and engineering. So it, it's a place that's generating a lot of, of engineering graduates and companies like, like, like Google and others from the US and the Bay Area come there to recruit engineers. So that's a, a really strong suit for, for Monterey. Next. Uh, it's IT sector, while it's not huge, it's one of the largest in Mexico, more than 400 ICT companies, most of which are entrepreneur led, meaning they're smaller, but these are relatively young companies, but it's also home to SoftTech, which is the largest private technology company in Latin America. So thinking about their innovation system, Venture capital is still hard to find, but it's getting easier. It's not as hard to find as in a lot of other places. There are a number of really significant locally based venture firms. There's a lot of angels. And what's interesting about Monterey in this way is because of all the wealth there, the families that have created these large industrial companies, there's a lot of family wealth. And much of that is going into family offices and the family offices are starting to invest in, in venture capital. So this is really a growing uh, field of locally generated venture capital coming out of Monterey. Then you have other facilities like the Monterey Digital Hub that is designed to link these large industrial companies with startups and, and other sources of digital innovation. And then you have Inc. Monterey, which is really interesting. It is a huge, like eight to 10,000 participant annual uh, technology conference that focuses on helping young companies scale. And it's not just companies in Monterey from all around Mexico. So it's a big extravaganza. And so looking at the assets, uh, it has like Tijuana and, and like Juarez, a large manufacturing base, 
very sophisticated, a lot of advanced manufacturing that needs the technologies like industry 4.0, IoT, all of that uh, to upscale, you have this uniquely strong leadership and focus from the business community. You have all these major corporate headquarters with a lot of capital available and, and corporate family um, uh, supported venture funds. And then you have Tech de Monterey, which is uh, a private university. It's very entrepreneur focused. Uh, it's one of the leading universities in the world, in fact, that generates a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of technologists and a lot of engineers. And really, it, it, it's a deep foundation for the technology and entrepreneurial sector there and a unique asset for, for Monterey. And it helps make Monterey a really interesting place for technology and entrepreneurship. Next. And you can see here on the tech side, you know, a lot of this is focused on e-commerce, software, mobile. Uh, those are the big ones, but this is kind of how the e-commerce sector and the tech sector aligns. Next. Uh, so getting to Mexico City, this, this is truly the big enchilada, as we say. Uh, besides being the capital of the administrative cultural center of Mexico, it's really the heart of the national economy. It accounts for more than a quarter of the GDP of the whole country, home to a lot of the largest companies in Mexico, um, especially on the commerce side, state-owned companies and others. Uh, it lately has been receiving the highest amount of uh, FDI in Mexico, the state of Mexico surrounds Mexico City, you throw that in, you got even more activity and more FDI. And it also concentrates a lot of scientific and academic talent, a lot of major universities, including the National Autonomous University of Mexico, which is the largest in Latin America, and all these universities, public or private, uh, in one form or another, start, uh, support startups and entrepreneurs. Uh, Mexico City is also the home base for most of Mexico's venture funds, most of its venture transactions, most of the venture uh, invested venture capital, about 80% goes into Mexico City. Uh, there are major accelerators like Endeavor, Google's there, uh, 500 startups is there. Uh, and, and then there's, because of that, uh, there's a lot of leading, uh, very successful, uh, relatively young uh, technology startups that are growing there very, very fast. And I think also on the on the plus side for the city, the government is really focused on this. They're focused on developing digital infrastructure, digitizing city services, and supporting entrepreneurial growth as, as the economy itself digitizes. Next. And there you can see uh, on this chart, just the scale of Mexico City, and you put it with the state of uh, Mexico next to it, that is a lot of GDP compared to everywhere else. But there you can see, again, after Mexico City and the state of Mexico, the way of Leon, it's Monterrey, Jalisco, Guadalajara, and the rest of Mexico. Next. And you can see, again, the fundraising, uh, how it's really just gone through the ceiling. Again, it's not a massive scale by Silicon Valley standards, but you can see what, what, what the trend is. Next. And I'll just skip this one for the purpose of time. And uh, then looking at Guadalajara. So if Monterey is the industrial capital, uh, Mexico City is really the, the heart of the action around you know, commercial activity across the board. Uh, I think you could say Guadalajara is like the technology capital of the country. Uh, the state has the fourth largest economy in Mexico. Uh, but the city of Guadalajara is really where you find so much of the technology activity coming from. And part of that is built on a really strong university base, more than 440,000 students in higher ed. There's about 5,000 engineering graduates coming out of that. Uh, you've got the University of Guadalajara, which is the second largest in Mexico, uh, and a lot of other universities, again, all of which are, have a very strong focus on, on graduates uh, in, uh, in entrepreneurial programs and in engineering and many support research uh, laboratories. So the economy is anchored in manufacturing, uh, but Jalisco is also home to about 40% of the IT companies in Mexico, there's about a thousand operating there. They support a lot of jobs, 
And there's really big clusters around technology, e-commerce, financial services, and, and other sectors. Next. Uh, I think from an outside standpoint, what's interesting is it's become an important base for a lot of global companies uh, from everywhere, uh, but especially from Europe uh, and from Silicon Valley. It, it's the number one place that Silicon Valley is are going to in Mexico. So that includes companies like HP, Oracle, that has about 1,500 people uh, who are really developing core technologies for the company, and Intel that employs about 1,200 at its design center. And I think for Intel, this is an interesting case because it's one of six, only six global design centers around the world that are working together that are really developing cutting edge technologies. And one of the other advantages in, in Guadalajara from the Silicon Valley standpoint is it's a three hour direct flight from San Francisco and there's a lot of direct flights. So it's kind of like the flights that go much, much longer to India. Um, this big flight bridge. But in the case of Guadalajara, it's only three hours. So it's really easy for companies to support teams there and go back and forth. Uh, there's also uh, another distinctive aspect of what's happening there is a history going back many years of really focused cooperation between government universities and the business community, going back to when they were growing really strong and then China came on the map after they joined the WTO and Guadalajara lost a lot of manufacturing to China. And then they figured we have to get it together between government, business and industry. And they've done that. They're focusing on startups high value production, and that's what's happening. And so we're seeing a, a really strong and growing startup community. There's not a lot of local VC, but it comes from Mexico City. Um, and you have some really large uh, events like Talent Land is kind of like Inc. Monterey and Monterey, uh, about 10,000 people showing up uh, around technology and innovation and talent development, and then some really significant accelerator and startup programs like a startup Guadalajara. Next. So finally, two other places worth mentioning. Now, these aren't big tech centers yet, and they're, they're not big entrepreneurial centers. They don't have a lot of venture capital floating around, but they're, they're interesting anyway. One is a region called El Bajio that has parts of five states near Mexico City. So it's a place with a lot of really advanced production. Uh, automotive, aerospace, and other sectors, but very business-friendly policies that are oriented toward not just FDI, but they are also now trying to get um, innovation systems going. So they get a lot of FDI. They also have very strong universities, a growing number of technology research centers, uh, a growing IT sector. So really, you know, worth in looking at because it's close to Mexico City too, so you can go back and forth. And the other place that's interesting, I was really surprised when I learned more about this, is, is the city of Yucatan and the city of Merida. And people think of Yucatan, they think of, of, of Cancun and the beaches, but there's a lot more going on than that. So it, it's attracting a lot of interest because A, it's growing really well. There's a really high quality of life. <clears throat> uh, security is good uh, because of kind of the arts and history there. It's appealing to people from creative industries and they are deliberately pushing into IT with the idea of becoming an offshore service center for US companies. So they're not huge on that landscape yet, but, but they're pushing in, in that sector and they have some assets as they do that. There's a strong university community it's focused on developing IT skills, supporting entrepreneurs, not a lot of venture capital. It's hard to scale in a place like Merida, but the capital is coming in and entrepreneurs are coming in because it's a great place to live and start companies. And so there's more facilities being developed to support startups in Yucatan. Next. And here you can see the Zell Bajil. You know, this is just a lot of manufacturing going on there. Next. Uh, you can see the foreign investment, again, a lot of foreign investment in, in El Bajio. And you can see the other, the other big places, of course, uh, Mexico City and Nueva Leon, which is a board of Monterey's. And next. So getting to the Bay Area, how does it connect here? Well, there's a lot of really rich history uh, with the Bay Area going back to the Spanish colonial period. 
I won't go into it here, but there's a lot of cultural activity, a lot of family connections, a lot of artistic connections going back many, many, many years. There's Mexican family owned wineries, which is really fun. It's not tech, uh, but you know, there's a lot of depth to the relationship. But I think what we're seeing here is that investment from the Bay Area to California from, and the California to Mexico is going up very fast especially now with a technology focus. So it's spread all across Mexico, but it's concentrated like a lot of other stuff in four cities, Mexico City, Tijuana, Guadalajara, and it in Monterey. Next. Uh, so the largest category of these investment transactions was in guess what? Software and IT services. And most of that was coming out of the Bay Area in Silicon Valley. Uh, and it, from investments across California, the majority of those now uh, are, are concentrated in technology and coming from, from the Bay Area. And a lot of companies from here are expanding their presence in Mexico, looking for that engineering talent we were talking about earlier. Most are focused again, Guadalajara and Mexico City, but there, as I was trying to make the point earlier, there's a lot of engineering talent in other cities across Mexico. So some of our major companies like Oracle, HP, and Intel, you know, big footprints in Guadalajara, Plantronics is in Tijuana. Lyft just opened an engineering office last year in Mexico City. Um, Uber, 57 Mexican cities now, 8 million subscribers for Netflix. Stripe just opened its Latin America office in Mexico City. So you can see there's a, a growing footprint for technologies from the Bay Area and technology companies from the Bay Area in Mexico. Next. Uh, there's not a huge VC connection yet, but it's growing. A number of the major firms are investing there now. There's also a number of firms based in the Bay Area that are specifically focused on Mexico and Latin America that are becoming very active. Uh, 500 startups I mentioned earlier. Uh, is in Mexico City, Y Combinator, a really significant percentage of the startups passing through are coming from uh, Mexico and, and Latin America. And I was really struck by the number of founders of tech companies in Mexico who are graduates of Stanford. <laughs> and they met at Stanford, they, they got the bug. So there's this connection through Stanford. Uh, so more and more startups with the Bay Area connection and often with dual headquarters where the team is here, but maybe their engineering is being done in Mexico. Next. Um, and this just shows you the FDI. You can see how lately it's especially concentrated in IT and software and IT services. And you look at the second tier there, where's it coming from here? Santa Clara County in San Francisco. Well, surprise, that's where the technology companies are located. Next. So finally, so what, what, what does this lead us to think? Uh, so, a couple of key takeaways. Uh, the scope of the relationship between the Bay Area and Mexico is, is changing, it's evolving. It's moving more in the direction now of technology and R&D and, and an active startup connection uh, beyond just traditional manufacturing companies from here and elsewhere are finding a very large base of, of highly skilled engineers uh, that can be harnessed to do a lot of things besides manufacturing, including R&D. Uh, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement that was approved about a year ago formally uh, provides a really important framework for investment. And so, you know, there's a lot of debate around secure supply chains now, reliable resilience in supply chains, especially with U.S.-China political tensions growing. And, and as, as people are thinking about secure supply chains for a, a wide range of reasons, there's growing interest in nearshoring production. And so that's a big opportunity with Mexico because you couldn't be nearer or nearer shore than if you're in Mexico. But to do it in Mexico has to provide the right conditions. It has to be, continue to be an investment friendly environment. Uh, it has to have good security, good workforce. So I think a lot of the ball is in Mexico's court to say, hey, we can do this. Uh, the venture market is, is maturing. Um, we're seeing global investors coming in at a significant scale. And one takeaway for me is that uh, that suggests that maybe VCs from Silicon Valley should look at the Mexico market more deeply and think about coming in earlier, uh, earlier to that market. 
And there's a few other opportunities that are important about how to build these ties with Mexico, even though the national government isn't so keen on it. A lot of these states and cities are very focused on renewable energy. There's something called Commission on the Californias that's a vehicle for connecting California with its neighbor, Baja California. It's an intergovernmental thing, but there's things that they can do, like looking at a smart border. Remember, we talked about that huge level of, of border crossing for people and, 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 and for manufacturing and commerce. Well, we need more technology in that, make it a smarter border, more data-driven border, more efficient border. And then again, <clears throat> there's strong ties between the University of California and university, <clears throat> universities in Mexico. And they've been thinking about how to wrap in entrepreneurship into their bilateral agreements and, 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 and partnerships in Mexico. And I think that's a really good area that could help strengthen that bridge of Mexican entrepreneurs with Silicon Valley and the Bay Area and grow that startup presence here. So there's a lot to talk about. This is a really short summary of 144 pages of relentless detail, if you'd like to see it. Uh, that's all on our website, uh, bayareaeconomy.org. And I thank you very much for your attention. I think that uh, as we look around the world from the Institute at places where there are interesting things happening and growing partnerships around technology and innovation, Mexico came as a surprise. Uh, when I began this project, I didn't really expect to see this, this kind of depth or this growth, but I think what we're seeing now shows a, a, lot, of, a lot of opportunity for business development and investment in the future. Thank you.